Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video, and in this one, I'm talking about an interview uh, I actually had with a modder. Um, it was kind of a unique opportunity, because uh, I was reopening the subscriber clan just to talk with you guys for the 3K subs subscriber celebration, and uh, during that time, a guy mentioned that he uh, was a modder, and uh, you know I let him in and I talked to him about it, because it was interesting, and I think it's important for the fair play community to know exactly uh, where modders come from, where they stand within the game, because uh, it can really help uh, Clash of Clans as a whole uh, develop and uh, hopefully be a more enjoyable uh, for everyone, and especially the people that are following the roles in the game, because I think they get the priority. Uh, but anyway, um, before I recap what happened and show some of this stuff, um, I, I just want to tell you guys that this is just my opinion. I'm not speaking on behalf of One Hive as a whole or one hive genesis um i'm not speaking on behalf of anyone in the clan but myself so these are just my opinions uh at a very personal level um and also the person who i interviewed asked not to have his name mentioned so i will not mention his name in this video um i took a few screenshots i'm not going to show them i can just kind of read them out to you guys so bear with me but um i'm going to talk about the questions i asked while you guys watch these uh awesome attacks from the last war and I'll talk about um, what he said and kind of what I think about that. So uh, let's get started. Um, all right. So anyway, um, the first question I asked him was just why did you start modding? You know, what got you into it? And uh, his response, just to paraphrase it a little bit, it, it seemed that uh, with fair play, there's a level of mystery as far as who's modding and who's not. Because you can never be exactly sure whether or not someone's modding. I kind of see where he's coming from. Because uh, there's always some, you know, pointing the fingers back and forth whenever there's an intense fair play war, uh, especially when it's not an arranged war, when like two fair play clans just meet up, um, and it's maybe a little bit less friendly. There's always a lot of pointing of the fingers. Uh, so I guess modding I, is in some ways a level playing field because everyone's using it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess uh, I can see where he's coming from. It's everyone starting at the same spot, um, even though it kind of becomes a time sink now as far as how much time you're going to spend on the base. Uh, but I don't know. I, I guess that makes sense. And uh, it's at least balancing out the game uh, to some extent because, like I said, everyone's starting with the same tools, uh, being modding uh, people. They can all use uh, this, the, uh, the mechanics of or the system to uh, enhance their attacks. So I guess that's why I started modding. Um, Next question I asked him, just bear with me for a second, I have to pull it up here in the screenshots. Um, here we go. Um, okay, so next thing I asked him was, when does he get that feeling of accomplishment? Like, for a fair play guy, it's typically when they get the three star, uh, you know, after doing a lot of planning and working hard to, get to kind of map out their attack and, you know, with people on team speak and stuff and I asked him well, when is that for a someone who mods and he says it's when you discover the way to crack the base whether it's air or ground and then you can do variations of it so I'm not exactly sure what he means by variations but um, I guess for modders it's more of like finally I crack this base and obviously that's gonna drift more towards Town Hall 10 I'll talk about that more in a bit but because uh, obviously Town Hall 10 is a lot harder than Town Hall 9 and if you know it takes a while to mod at Town Hall 9. Uh, you're obviously not that good of an attacker. Um, but anyway, uh, not a whole lot there. Let's go ahead and go to the next question. Um, actually, on this topic, I asked him, so is it like fun to mod at Town Hall 10? Uh, is it more of a Town Hall 10? Or sorry, is it fun to mod at Town Hall 9? Or is it more of a Town Hall 10 and 11 game at this point? Uh, because Town Hall 9 has become so easy. And he says it's not too much fun, fun at Town Hall 9 anymore. Um, it's more of a Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11 thing, and that's why he says he got into it, because it's uh, hard to 3-star otherwise, which I wouldn't necessarily agree with, but I guess uh, without a lot of you know, practice and um, max troops and stuff, it is very difficult to 3-star at Town Hall 10, and um, Town Hall 11 I can't speak for as much, but anyway, so uh, like I said, Town Hall 9 has kind of been dying, in the modding community just because you know no one no one modded at town hall 8 really beforehand and now town hall 9 has kind of gotten similar to what town hall 8 used to be so not a whole lot of reason to mod there i guess um 
let me find the next question real quick. Um, so actually someone else asked him, do you guys go at it individually or collaborate on TeamSpeak or Twidla or something of a group uh, forum to communicate and plan attacks? And uh, his response was, uh, when the scout attack is done, we have a dibs list where you choose a base and attempt to crack, uh, and attempt to crack it. Once a player, uh, once you crack it, you put your, where is he? You put your name on it, and it says whose account is needed, like what hero levels. And uh, once you can get the three star, you put um, some emojis uh, with your name on it to show that you've three starred it. So basically, it seems like a little bit more of an individual thing. Um, it's not is like for fair play people you want to have you know a lot of people looking at your attack because um, it's all speculation you know you, you can't do the attack like the modders can so it's all like do you think this will work how's this going to plan out a lot of visualization a lot of creativity with modders it's more of just a time sink it's I guess more of an individual thing based on his response and it's something that you kind of go out go at on your own and then you report back to your clan once you've been able to get it uh, taken care of so um, a, li a little less fun in my opinion when it's just you sitting there with your phone for um, an hour maybe depending on how long it takes to crack a base which I think was another question we'll get into in a moment but a uh, lot more individual I guess is the is the main th message that I'm getting uh, when you're using mods so um, moving on the next question is here we go Okay, um, why don't mo- er, what was it? Okay, do modders try to, you know, get the three star, uh, every war and try to get perfect wars because, um, I guess it's, pr it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, doable if you spend the amount of time. Um, and his response basically was, um, not every war, sometimes the scouts get the two star and we leave it like that because we don't have time. So, I think t modding, like I said, is much more of a time sink. It's, you know, you, you get out what you put in. Um, it's kind of like trophy pushing in a way. So sometimes I guess it's just not worth it, especially if they're not in a war against another modding clan. Um, it's not worth it for them to uh, try to, you know, three-star every base just because they're going to win the war. And uh, it's not any practice for them. It's just, you know, spending time to do something. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I really understand it to a full extent, but I guess it helps to have these answers, and I hope it helps you guys understand a little bit better. Uh, but let's get into the next question anyway. Um, let me find it for a second. Uh, one thing he also was saying is that it takes a lot of time to crack a base, and if you misdrop something, or there's a script fail, or something like that, your attack fails too. So um, I, I guess there's sometimes there could be a you know, a malfunction in the script because a lot of times you can just tap it out beforehand and the system remembers what you touched so it does the exact same attack back to you. But I guess sometimes that malfunctions or sometimes uh, you just misdrop the troop, uh, you know, when when you're doing the attack for real if you don't use that. So um, it varies, I guess, and um, uh, it, it seems like the, it's not ex always a sure deal for modding. Uh, there is still an element of, you know, possibility that something could go wrong, especially if you're, you know, not using the script where it just does the deployment for you. So um, let's look, take a look at the next questions that were asked him. Um, I forget the question here, but he says um, typically what they do is they train a two-star army for the 11s, and uh, for the 10s, <clears throat> they usually just do the 0%. Uh, or two stars since those usually get cleared every war so it seems like Town Hall 10s are pretty much getting taken out every war I mean at this point in the game I think with a modding attack you can three star a Town Hall 10 pretty easily unless it's a maxed base with a good defense in that case it probably gets pretty difficult but as far as Town Hall 10s with kind of garbage layouts or even just under upgraded I th from what he's saying what I've what I know about this it's I think it is pretty easy to three star and I can imagine so with all the extra help from the modding equipment so um, yeah that's basically their plan though I guess for Town Hall 11 they, they try to get the two star on the scouts because nothing's a sure bet um, and if they can't get the modding the modded three star they want to stick with the two star 
off the scout. Um, all right. Last question is coming from me, and I asked him, "What does the modding community want from Supercell? What What do they want to see in the game? Uh, kind of what's What are they looking for as an update or something like that?" Um, which is interesting because it it, it they're a, a part of the war community, whether we like it or not. And uh, hope I mean I'm hoping it won't be like that forever. But as long as they are, I'm just curious as to what they want exactly in the updates. And uh, Raiden, or, uh, he, he said that they want arranged matchups mostly, uh, kind of like the the we do in the fair play community. Um, they, according to him, they don't like it when uh, they run into a fair play clan, cause since it's obviously going to be a win for them. Um, and that makes sense, I guess. They want to stay on their side of the fence. Uh, but unfortunately, unless arranged matchups come, uh, which I'm not seeing much evidence for, and especially with the new update that's going to make your matchups being based off of your win streak, um, it, town or modern clans and, and uh, fair play clans are going to get matched up a lot more with each other just because they'll both have won a lot. There won't be the big pool of farming clans and casual war clans to get matched up with. It'll all be top war clans and uh, you know, out of all the out of all the clans, the percentage of modding clans might be one in a thousand. But once you get to the top clans, it might be one in four or one in three. So the chance is just going to go way up. Um, and I think it's going to be a shock for a lot of fair play clans who might not have seen much modding, including myself. I haven't seen much of it in the clans I've been in. But um, anyway, I think that's all the questions. I might have one or two more that he ended up answering. Um. Oh yeah, one person asked him what would he do if Supercell started banning people who modded or quit the, or um, or in some way were able to detect them and penalize modders, and he basically said he'd probably quit the game, uh, which I think is pretty consistent because once you go to the mods, I think it's hard to go back to fair play. It's just you've taken up interest in a different part of the game, um, but I, it can be done. I just think that most people would agree with him and they would probably quit, at least from what I've heard. So. Um, I think there might be one more question. Um, well, a, a follow-up question was, uh, would you try to just figure out how to three-star, uh, on your own? Uh, kind of repetitive, but he, uh, his response was, um, he might try to join some kind of, like, laid-back clan and just, you know, do wars more casually. Um, but I, he's aware of, and I think a lot of modding people are, that clans like One Hive aren't gonna accept, uh, people who used to mod, even if they say they're fair play now. Um, and he said this himself in his answer. And I think that's good that people know One Hive doesn't stand for that. Even if people say they've quit modding, uh, we're always going to be uh, strictly against modding. And I know the policy of One Hive is that uh, if you did use mods at one point, you're not allowed to join. So I think that's good. I think it's good people understand that because it just makes sure that you know we don't have any uh, suspicious suspicious attacks or anything like that we're very squeaky clean in the clan uh, so I think that's good when we know that our recruits are going to be 99% of the time fair play um, but anyway uh, that's all the questions we asked him big shout out to him uh, for answering all the questions because uh, don't, don't get me wrong I don't like modders I don't think they're good for the game um, but this is something I've been looking into more recently especially after I heard about the new update where uh, win streaks are going to count into war matchmaking because that'll make us get matched with modders more often. And um, I think that Supercell, I mean, I've, everyone says this in the fair play community, they need to do something. And uh, the evidence has shown they're probably not going to, at least not anytime soon. Um, and I think if they don't, it's just going to kind of slowly uh, strangle the war community to some extent. But um, it is what it is. We'll see how it works, how this new update affects things, and how modding continues in the future. Because uh, I do look forward to uh, watching the game progress as I'm going to Town Hall 10 very soon and uh, seeing how things start to work out in the new Clan Wars as a Town Hall 10 uh, just in the future. So, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video. If nothing else, maybe you guys like the attacks in the background and maybe learned a thing or two about modders that you didn't before. Because uh, I think it's important that. Uh, we understand, you know, where they're coming from in the game, uh, even if we don't agree with them. So, hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the later videos. Bye, Sectatron out.